Uh, the Festa girls are still talking. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Sheesh. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I just during worship, I just, I just felt like encouraging everybody because I was picking up a lot of different emotions and a lot of things going on in here, right? And um, you know, as you all know, the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but what does he do? He delivers us out of them all. And, and as we, you know, in the season that we're in, I, 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 I get it. You know, I, I just kept hearing the Lord say, I have them engraved in the palm of my hands and I've counted your hairs. They're numbered. And that's how special each and every one of us are to him. And he loves us so very much. And it, there are times I know, you know, we've been through hell and back, just saying. And, um, but, and there are times that as you're going through these situations, it seems like God's not there, right? I mean, we know what the Bible says, but we all have emotions, right? It's like, hello, Lord, are you here? And, but the Bible says he's the God of the invisible, too. And Abraham called those things which be not as though they are. So I just want to encourage you. He hears your prayers. He's behind the scenes working on whatever we're standing for. He loves us. His word is true and every man's a liar. And when the enemy comes in and says, this isn't going to happen, I think, wait a minute, Lord, your word says in numbers that God's a man and he can't lie right? He's, he's the God. Of, we have a covenant with him. He's the prisoner of hope. We have hope in him. It doesn't matter. We cannot, if you're trying to figure out how it's going to happen, don't, because you're not going to be able to figure that out. Only God can produce the suddenlies. Only God can cause that miracle, that break or anointing to come through. So when I'm going through it and when I'm really having a hard time or not sleep, you know, you just, we have stuff, right? And, and things happen. And, but I'm like, Lord, and I'll rehearse the scriptures and I'll start worshiping because the enemy wants us to focus on what's wrong. And listen, I know I'm speaking to the choir here. I know you know that. But isn't it good to hear it over and over again? Because I'm like, Lord, I'm like, God, last night I was just praying in the spirit. I said, Lord, do you know how long I've been praying for this one thing here? <laughs> do you know? I know you're not in time, but we are. So, hello? You know the frame? You know we're made up of, God? So... But I just felt like encouraging because I, when my husband, when we were singing some song, I was just thinking of, Lord, your goodness. Lord, you're Jehovah Shalom. You're the God of peace. You know, I love, his, the, I love to meditate on the names of God. You're Jehovah Rapha. You know, you're my healer. You're Jehovah Sinkanu. You're my righteousness. Because of you, I can come before your throne room of grace boldly because of the blood of Jesus that cleanses us as we repent and go before the Lord. You know, when you just rehearse the goodness of the Lord, the miracle working God that we serve, El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough, the miracle working God. Oh my gosh, you start getting all fired up and then you want to start preaching, you know? And so it's like, wait a minute, wait a second. From what I remember, the devil's under my feet. He was defeated at the cross, the blood of Jesus. Jesus is the only one who rose from the dead. And sometimes, you know, people look at us, if you're new here, you think we're crazy, praying in tongues, worshiping that long. Well, we are. We're crazy for Jesus. And, 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 and let me just say Guilty this one more thing. We can't have it. We cannot be passive or straddle the fence. The Bible says you're either hot or you're cold. Or he spits you out of his mouth. Or the other version says he'll vomit you out. So God is calling us today into more of a passion or that zeal. And I know we have it. But I'm telling you, I'm not backing down. The Bible says that when we wear the armor of God, we don't have anything on our back because we don't ever run. Because the Bible says we're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. And so, again, when you meditate on that, as you, as you breathe in the breath of God, as you're meditating on the word, I know how hard it is. There have been times that I thought, am I born again, Lord? Because I don't know what's happening in my life because of how difficult things have been at times. But he's always proven himself. He's always come through. It may not be just the way you are, but I'm telling you, God is saying the joy of the Lord is your strength. In that place of worship, in that place of just honoring him, I'm telling you, we're victors. And then he does what he does. When Abraham was told that you're going to have a baby, and he and Sarah laughed, right? But 25 years later, now, Lord, you know we don't have 25 years, right? But, but in that time frame, God broke through. We can't figure it out. 
But I'm telling you, God's raising up an army. And we, you've heard us say this, but this is an army that's not going to look from the left or to the right. We're going to keep our eyes like Flint and not care what we see but decree the word of the Lord because there's life and death in the power of our tongue. And so the Lord is saying, prophesy to yourself, prophesy over your situation, speak the word over your stuff. Don't listen to your thought process of this is ridiculous. How can this happen? How can that person get healed? That's not my problem, that's his problem. He died on the cross, I didn't. So that's again, we have to just trust him. I have seen God break through and miracles after miracles. It wasn't always easy. But I've seen God break through. We have seen God break through in, in the suddenlies of the Lord and not giving up. So here's my word. Don't give up. He's got your back. He has his angelic presence going before you in our rear guard. He's surrounding us with his love. Because let me tell you something. The devil's afraid of each and every one of us. We have great authority. And so, see, and if you don't know who you are and your authority, that's where the enemy comes in and tries to destroy you. You have to say, wait a minute, I'm a son and a daughter of the Lord. That's just enough, right? I'm covered by the blood, and you're under my feet. The devil goes around as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Are you going to let him devour you? No. No, because the Bible says that he's afraid and greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So that's what we have to do. It's like, wait a second. Let me tell you what the word of God says. You want to talk to me about where I'm going? Let me tell you what the word says about you and how defeated you are. So that's who we are. That's what God wants to do in our life. God is saying, listen, stop. You don't look at yourself as you're just defeated, orphaned individual. You're not. You're a son, you're a daughter, you're not defeated. We are not, well, I'm not even going to go, well, no, I'm not saying, forget it. We are just trusting Jesus. Amen. Oh, you make the announcement. Aren't you glad I married her? Amen. So could you just release, yes. break off that Amen. fear? So Lord, we just thank you that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Lord, we thank you that we are the head and not the tail. Lord, we thank you that we are seated next to you in heavenly places. And we rule from heaven's perspective, not fear's perspective, not the devil's perspective, not the government's perspective. We rule from your perspective, oh God. And Lord, we just thank you for your breaker anointing that's on each and every one of us because we have Jesus Christ residing within us. So, Lord, we just loose a greater hunger for your word and your presence, O oh God, because the Lord says that, he, we, that our end, our latter, shall be greater, not worse, not weaken. He said greater. And so, Lord, we just thank you that we have the mind of Christ and we focus on how great you are. And the greater one is in us. And you break through. You make a way where there is no way. You make a door where there is no door. You open up the heaven's gates where there has been brass heavens. So, Lord, we say now is the time. This is a time of turnaround. This is a time of no more delay. It says in Ezekiel, the word of the Lord says no more delay. And that's in Ezekiel 12. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, God. So, hallelujah. Yeah, you can look that up in Ezekiel 12. Whew. Ooh, I feel the spirit of the Lord on me. Oh, I do. Whew. That's what the word of Jesus is in us. Whoo, Jesus. I'm telling you, if you need a miracle right now, just stand up and just grab onto that miracle. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your breaker anointing that's here, oh God. Lord, we say, heal the sick, Lord. We decree healing of the pancreas right now. We say, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you for the prodigals for healing. I'm telling you, God is bringing healing to your families. Do not give up. Lord, we just send forth your angels. Would you release your angels to minister, oh God, to these kids, to these wayward ones, to these adults to family members right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we just thank you for your breakthrough over finances. And for those of you that have been threatened with your jaws about this vaccination, God says, watch what he'll do. So Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you for the shift and the turnaround, oh God, because we trust you. We trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. 
and we lean not on our own understanding, oh God, but in all our ways. We acknowledge you and you direct our path, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you for your presence. We just thank you for your presence here, oh God. Oh, the Lord is releasing his fresh oil. The Lord says that which has been like a, 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 a vice grip over you, the Lord says it's breaking off. That which has been a vice grip over your situations, the Lord says he's breaking off. So just, just do like that. Break it off. Break off the mindsets. I'm telling you, the Lord says it's not going to be like it was. The Lord's saying, come on, it's not just a spectator thing. Come on, you press in. You press in for that which you've been planning for. You press in for your healing. You press in for that deliverance. You press in right now. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We thank you for your brooding presence, just like you did over Mary. And Lord, your word says that what's impossible with man is possible with you. You're the God of all possibility. So Lord, we just thank you. We just thank you, Holy Spirit. We just thank you. Woo. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We just thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm telling you the presence of the Lord. Just thank him. Thank him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you're brooding, you're birthing, you're planting seed. And many are ready to give birth into the new right now. Father, we just thank you that the angels are here to push and help you push and birth the new. Woo, thank you, Lord. 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 And Lord, right now under this open heaven, Father, we send forth your word to Trenton. And we say, Lord Jesus, up cover the corruption. Uproot the root system of corruption. We say you dry the roots now. Dry up those roots now and let your truth prevail in Jesus' name. Lord, that goes way back, way back with all the corruption. And Lord, we say New Jersey will become a state that honors you, a state that honors you, a state that looks for righteousness and stands for righteousness. In Jesus' name. Woo, thank you, Lord. Woo, woo, hallelujah. Woo. Well, let's just stay here. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here right now. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. The Lord is present. The Lord, Lord is, is saying, present. cry, call out unto me, and I yes. will answer you and show you great and mighty things not, a, not mentioned. The Lord said, cry out to me right now. I'm so sorry. Cry, cry out, out to him. Cry out to me. Cry, cry out, out to me. him right Lord, now. Lord, we cry out to you for breakthrough and deliverance. God, we cry out to you, yes, oh Lord. God. Yes, we Lord. cry out to you, yes, oh God. We're, yes, we're humbling ourselves, yes, oh Lord. Lord. We ask you to rend the heavens, oh God. Rend the heavens, oh God. Rend the heavens, oh God. Hoyerama sebra hayata. Hoyerama hayata. Shebra setiata. Hoyerama mama 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 hayata. Hoyerama shebra setiata. Hoyerama mama 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 hayata. Thank you, Lord, for the breaker anointing that's Woo. here right now to break open those hard places. You break Thank open you, those hard, stuck places and you release your oil. Release your oil in this place to us right now. We receive that lubrication in the Spirit of God to go in those difficult places. We penetrate into those dark places to bring the light into the darkness, Lord. Let your light shine in the darkness through your people. Breaker anointing is here. The breaker anointing is here to release captives. 
Prisoners, come forth out of that cell. Yes, yes, yes. For Shebra. And if you feel to come up to the altar right now, come on. Listen, God is working. He's doing yeah. something. Yeah. Just let's just honor whatever yeah. spirit of the Lord is saying. That's right. God, we just thank you that you're healing. Father, those with emotional issues, those that mm -hmm. even feel like you're going crazy, mm -hmm. the Lord says, put your hand on your head. Yeah. That the Lord says you have the mind of Christ, and I bind yeah. that tormenting spirit. Break I take authority over it now. It. And where we, we loose the shalom of the Lord. Shut we loose the peace of God over your mind right now. In Jesus' name. We break off confusion right now. We break off the crooked thinking. Crooked thinking that people have been bound by, Lord. We break that off now in Jesus' name. That the truth of God will penetrate. You got something? God, I'm telling you, Mr. Covenant Heights. Uh, Diana Jones' husband, <laughs> Corey. I'm telling you, God says that it's it's time. The Lord says that things are going to break open. The Lord says, don't give up, don't be discouraged. The Lord says, just let it out, just let it out, just let it out. He's going to be your strength, not you. He's going to be your strength. The Lord says, He's heard your cry, Corey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift off the weight. Lift off the weight. So now I want to call those, maybe you don't know Jesus yet as your Savior. I want to call those that maybe you don't know the Lord. Maybe you don't know what hope looks like or feels like. Maybe you don't know what love feels like and looks like. Maybe you're here today and you don't know what's going on. This is your time. This is your door. The Lord is here. The Lord is here. You didn't come to a church. You did not come to a service. You did not come to a preacher. You came to a man that died on the cross 2,000 years ago for your sins and for my sins. And he lives today. And he has open arms waiting for you. So this altar is still open for those that never cried out to Jesus. Or maybe you did. And you've been away and you turned to other things. I've been there. So now is the time. So come. Come. Heaven is open. It's waiting for you. So come. Amen. Come. And here's what the Lord said. The Lord said to me that um, for those, there's some here, your heart's been hardened. There's, your heart's been indifferent. And the Lord is saying that he wants to heal your heart. The Lord says now is the time. Come forward. Don't be indifferent. Don't allow the hardness of your heart to hinder you. Don't allow it. Now is the time. Because that's why the unbelief is there. That's why you're hindered. It's because of a hard heart. So, Lord, we just thank you that you're massaging our hearts. Lord, that you're healing the woundedness and you're, you're creating, massaging our hearts and getting rid of the scar tissue. And we live on the East Coast, so we don't see it a lot. But when I was praying, I saw wildfires. I saw wildfires popping up in my family, my nieces, my nephew, my cousins. I saw wildfires in my communities. Families being saved, drug deliverance being and overdoses being addiction. I saw wildfires in our schools, in our governments, on our job. I saw wildfire. Father, we just thank you for an outpouring of your spirit, your love, people desiring for you signs, wonders, and miracles. Wildfires in our families, in our marriages, in our children, in our jobs, in our businesses. Wildfire! Hallelujah! Ooh, and we will be fire starters. Father, we thank you. We are fire starters. Light us up. Light us up. Light us up. We will run through our neighborhoods, our families, and communities. We will be the fire starters. Wildfire! While everybody was praying, and you know, he just came up and said the fire. What I saw was I saw a line of soldiers standing, and they had that long horn. And as they were blowing the horn, the fire was coming out of it. They were shooting fire over over this congregation. So I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the fire of God, and I thank you that it's reaching each and every one of us. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. So just come on, press into the presence of the Lord that's here right now. Moses saw the burning bush 
And the Lord spoke to him and said, take your shoes off because you're standing on holy ground. And when the presence of the Lord is here, we're standing on holy ground. Lord, we're just so grateful that you live inside of us. And I just keep seeing the picture of him pressing in another door in your heart. Another door in your heart. He's pressing in. He's asking you to let me into those inner chambers of your heart right now. Don't hold me off at a distance, but open up the door. I'm not going to break it down. I want you to open up the door and let me deeper into your life right now. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Make yourself real to every person at this altar right now. That there's nothing they have to hide from you. We break off shame. We break off condemnation. We break off agreement with lies that have been spoken over us. That that fire would consume every counterfeit thing that's living inside our hearts right now. That you would press in deeper into each one of our lives. Go ahead, Carolyn. As you're talking about that fire, uh, Pastor Peter, I just, I want to just repent for that fire, uh, for, for the spirit of unbelief. I don't know about you, but I have situations I've been praying for for 40 years. And you know, when you've been praying for something for 40 years, it's easy for the spirit of unbelief to come and set in. And so for right now, Father, I give you permission. First, Father, I repent. I repent where I have not believed that you are going to break through. And Father, I say, allow your fire to burn in that part of my heart where unbelief has set in. Right now, in Jesus' name, Father, I give you permission. I say, Lord, come and burn it out. I say, come and burn out that fire. Come and burn out that unbelief and that doubt. I welcome the fire of your presence, oh God, to consume it, consume it, consume it. Consume it. Consume unbelief and doubt right now in Jesus' name. Ooh, glory. Ooh, glory. And I also heard the Lord say, there is no more delay. He said one can put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand. And this gathering today is a, a demonstration of the power of God that is at work right now. And I want to touch and agree with any of you that those of us who've been praying that 40-year prayer, that today is the day of turnaround. Today is the day of turnaround. It is shifting. Today it shifts because we have the power of agreement in our mix. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He says, where are two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. Ask anything according to my will, I will do it. So we right now, whatever that is, picture it. Picture them. Picture whoever it is. Picture that situation. And say, Father, I thank you that you have declared that you are turning this situation, that the fire of your presence is turning that cold heart back to you. Father, right now in Jesus' name, I declare and decree when we go and encounter that person or that situation today, it will have turned. We're declaring a turning right now. Right now in their hearts, their hearts are turning. And they're turning back to you, God. They're coming to you. They're acknowledging you. And we speak to the spirit of death. We command the death assignment that has come against our loved ones to go right now in Jesus' name. We cast out death and destruction in Jesus' name. And we release resurrection life in Jesus' name. Just give one more picture because I believe it's tying this in. God said, I am the lie detector. And you know how the, you see that meter go off when, when you're hooked up to the lie detector. But God said, no, as you just open your heart to me right now, I'm going to reveal lies that you've been in agreement with. And my fire is going to come and burn that thing up right now. 
So Lord, we break agreement with every lie that we have come into agreement with. And we ask you to reveal inside of us right now, just look inside your heart and see where he's going. See where the flame is starting to light up because his, his lie detector is that fire burning in your heart to say, no, this is counterfeit. This is counterfeit. It's got to go. This is counterfeit. This relationship is counterfeit. It's got to go. Okay, Lisa. Father, we thank you for your presence. You have drawn us to your altar so that you could step deeper into the altar of our hearts. Father, we thank you for the fire because dross has to be burned. Father, we want to carry your glory, but it is too great without a purging. So, Father, we're at your altar today, right now, collectively. You've drawn us to this place. And, Lord, we, by faith, in obedience, open the door of our hearts that you would come deeper still. Lord, let nothing, let there be nothing in us, Lord God. You love us too much as we cry out to carry your glory and to have your presence. We need to be ready. So, Father, we're crying out to you. Lord, make us ready. Get us ready today, right now. Father, we welcome the fire on the altar of our hearts, Lord God. Show us everything. Illuminate everything. And, Lord, as he shows you what he shows you, be quick to obey and let it down. So, Father, we come as a body. We are one body. And, Lord, we come holding nothing back. We give you our hearts. That's the greatest gift that you want. And so, Lord, have your way. Have your way in us and in this place. Lord, raise us up, Father, to those that will be glory carriers in Jesus' name. And I just feel like the fire of the presence of God is there's a healing presence in here. And what I, what I heard was like fire shut up in my bones. And I heard the Lord say that he's healing people that have problems with their bones, osteoporosis, any type of cracking. I felt like this pain in my back, like right underneath my shoulder. Maybe it's like a rotator shoulder cuff. I just feel the Lord saying, like, just press into faith because the healing presence of the Lord is here. If you're having issues in your ovaries or some type of um, female problem where they have been a diagnosis, the presence of the Lord is here to heal you now. If you have problems with your intestines, the presence of the Lord is here to heal you now. I see somebody with, like, a right ankle issue. Maybe they there was some type of injury. The Lord is here. His presence is here to heal you now. So just receive the presence of the Lord. Receive his healing. Whether someone lays hands on you or not, the hand of the Lord is here. His presence is here to heal you in Jesus' name. And if you're battling with any of that, just come forward. I just want to say to the youth in this room, God sees you. He sees you right where you're sitting. He has not missed you. He has seen you since the moment you were conceived. Before you were even born, he has seen you. And right now, everything that has been spoken is spoken for you. It's spoken for you. And he said to me that he is healing families today. He's healing communication He's restoring love. He's restoring the lines. He's restoring the lines. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let's just pray, okay? Could you lift your hands? Lord, we're just so grateful that you live inside of us. And can you say this? My heart is the holy of holies of your presence. I mean, look, don't don't just say it. Believe it, okay? Believe that your heart is where he dwells. And if we expect to see change in New Jersey and and these ancient strongholds that have had a a root here, then, then we have to be people that can walk above our flesh, that can't be driven by the wrong motives in our hearts. So what Lisa was saying about that purging 
that fire that comes in and purges out the dross in our hearts. There's a reason for it. So that we can be those ambassadors of the kingdom and that we won't be carrying any of our pride or ego or, or our own self-image, but it's the image of Christ. So Lord, as we have our hands up, Lord, we just say, give us your character. Give us that ability to lose our life so that we may find the life that you have for us. You know, when I met Trisha, she was on fire for God, and the greatest gift that I saw her give people was to deliver them from demons. Because if you're bound by a demon and you've tried every other thing, nothing else works. But when the anointing is present, that thing has to let go. And that's the kindest thing that you could ever do for somebody is to get them free from demons. So why shouldn't all of us have that, that anointing that we carry, that breaker anointing, to release people from captivity? Because we're the sons of God. And Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to heal the brokenhearted, to bind up their wounds. And that long series of promises that he gives us in Isaiah 61, say, Lord, I claim those promises for my own. I want to walk in the full power that you have for my life. Break off unbelief in my heart that would restrain me from fully operating in the anointing that you've placed on me. You know, I don't know about you, but I still have my shoes off right now. I'm treating this like holy ground. And Moses, you know, he had to accept his assignment. So let's just say I accept the assignment that you give me, Lord, to be your disciple. Not just to say what you say but to do what you did. So when Carolyn came up and she was talking about repentance for unbelief and doubt, I, I saw, you know, this fire that was, you know, of course, falling in the room. And the best way I can describe it is as we yielded to the fire, you know, it was like an eruption of a volcano and like a lava fire. And what I saw sticking up the highest was shame. And I heard the Lord say that you will not carry my glory and the shame at the same time. Right. It's like shame puts out the fire. Shame. And so I feel like the Lord is saying, you know, there's a scripture that says when we confess our sins one to another, then we will be healed. So shame traffics when it's hidden. Not that you should just tell your stuff to anybody and everybody, but somebody, everybody has a safe one person or a safe counselor, safe pastor to, to get this mess exposed. So, that, so I feel like the Lord is saying, do not take shame back home with you. Leave it, leave it in the fire where it belongs. Shame is not your portion. Shame is not your portion, and to not uh, carry that. So even Jesus, when he was going to the cross, the word of God says that he despised the shame. That means he put it off. Even Jesus couldn't have carried shame to do what he had to do for us. That's how heavy shame is. So, Father, I break shame off of every person in this room under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, you will never carry shame another hour in the name of Jesus, but you will get comfortable in your royal robes that the Lord has put on you as his son and his daughter in the mighty name of Jesus. And, uh, for those of you, for parents, where you feel you messed up, I just want to encourage you. God the Father was, a, uh, was um, Adam and Eve's father in the garden, and they royally messed up. So just do not allow that shame and, and that disappointment to overtake you, okay? Because God knows. He knows the hurt. He knows the disappointments. And we've all blown it, right? We've all blown it. But God. And so, Lord, I just thank you again for that restoration. I thank you for healing. I thank you for deliverance, Father. I thank you for all that you're doing within our hearts. And to know that God loves our children more than he, we do. And in a, in a, in a, I think it's in Jeremiah 30, it says, refrain your eyes from, from crying. Your work will be rewarded, says the Lord. For I will take them out of the land of the enemy and bring them into my land, says the Lord. So, Lord, we prophesy that. We decree it. 
And we thank you that you watch over your word to perform it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sure glad I let her come up and take the microphone. <laughs> Make my announcement. <laughs> November, the last Sunday in November, we're going to have fellowship afterwards. And for those of you who were at the ladies' meeting, we, um, I, I said that if any of you have product to sell, we're going to have tables available for you to, to put your product up there. So you just have to let us know. I'll have a form back there. Just sign your name and just let us know, okay? Adriel, is Adriel still here? You want to just talk about the youth for a minute? You, you, come on. You know, just get started, and, and then Terry. Um, so uh, our youth, I, I just wanted to see this because I saw this a couple of Sundays ago. If you're under 18, can you just raise your hand? Just raise your hand. That's all right. That's, listen, I'm not, get, I'm not getting you. No, no, listen. This is church. You can't lie, okay? I see, I see you all. <laughs> I'm going to check your ID. <laughs> If you're under 18, would you, listen, I'm not getting your money. I'm not going after you. I just going to raise your hand, please. Come on. Up, up high. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Come on. I see more of you. There's no way you, you're more than 18. Come on. There you go. Get your hands up. All right. So now everybody, you see a hand around you? Do you see a hand around? All right. You guys can put your hands down. If you had a, a, a hand around you, I want you to turn to them, and now you're going to bless them for like one minute. You're just going to pray over them right now. All right, you're just going to love on them. And if, you're, if they're not your kids, I want you to love them like they were. And if, they're, and if they're not your nephew or whatever, I want you to love them. I want you to prophesy over them. I want you to bless them. I want you to speak life. We keep calling the kids home, but you, you know, you got to open up the home. We're calling them home, so open up your hearts to the kids. Come on. Turn to them. Come on, a lot of kids back there. Come on, I want to see more hands. Yes, Lord. We honor them. This is the word the Lord gave today. We see, Lord, you showing them to us. We see them. We acknowledge them. We thank you for them. We bless them. We receive them in the name of Jesus. We welcome them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, it is all for you. God says it is all for you. He would die again on the cross. If you were the only person in the earth, he would die again for you. He loves you, and his love is just pouring out over your heart right now, just pouring out and healing the broken places, the places you thought weren't worth fixing. He's fixing them today. He's restoring broken dreams and disappointment in Jesus' name. Yeah, and so we're going um, to release the youth, anybody sixth grade and up with a teen in your, in your age, we're going to go out the back and we're going to go over to the upper room where God can pour out his spirit on us today. So every Wednesday, we're going to be having youth groups 7 p.m. and it'll be 7 to 9 and it's going to run alongside the Wednesday classes and um, we are excited about, about it starting the upper room. That's yes. We always meet in the upper room. What well, we have, okay. <laughs> and so, so every Wednesday is so much fun. We have games. We have food. Lots of food. We have so many games. But more than anything, we have a community. We have love and acceptance. And we're gonna fill up your cup. We're gonna fill up the well, the spiritual well. You're going with her, whether you like it or not. You're going. <laughs> you will like it. And we thank you that you will make yourself real to every one of these young people. And it will not be a struggle with sin. There's a few that would like to be under 18, but need a miracle for that one. 
I just feel like we're shifting and back to a season where church is going to feel like church again. <laughs> that was a long break. You know, but we have the, the life groups going. We have fellowship every Sunday now. is going to be fellowship in that building where the upper room is. Today it'll be in the commons, which is the lower level. But even if that's pre-booked by another group, then we'll just meet upstairs after service. But we really need to just sit down and have a cup of coffee and get to know each other. Right, I said last week how many have been here less than a year, and a lot of hands up, hands went up of people who've been coming here for less than a year. And we just, we need to know each other. We need to be able to pray together and, and find that like-minded person that will hold us accountable. Iron sharpens iron. And we really can't just live off of just hearing another good teaching. We need those. We have to uh, have revelation on the Bible, but we need Jesus with skin on. We need other people that we can talk to and, and find that like-minded person. And, and especially like in sports, um, it was always good to play with athletes that were better than you because that, they brought out the best. It forced you to go to play harder and to focus more. And there's something about, you know, if you were on the Bulls when Michael Jordan was there, you became a better player because he caused everybody around him to come up higher. And, and you know, a lot of times when we bring in these different guest speakers like Chuck Pierce and, and that, that night that we did the uh, Pentecostal fire, they predicted a lot of what we're starting to see happen right now because they don't just talk about it, they impart something to us. They impart a gift that, that, not, that isn't just learning, it's giving us an ability to go, to go up higher, right? Like Michael Jordan, I, you know, he played good, but how come other people played good around him? It's because they did, he did something to them that was different than just knowledge. He displayed it, right? And we just all need that. We need the body of Christ. To, to be encouraged, but also when you're with somebody that's really serious about this, it shows you where you're not so serious about this. And instead of that being condemning, it's like, wow, I can, I can do better. I can aim higher. Not works, but just to have a greater understanding of who Jesus is in me. Amen? Well, this is an unusual service. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just, I'm thinking of Mario Murillo. I mean, that guy, he doesn't care what he says. He said he's too old to be politically correct. He said, who wants a regular service anyway? Regular service. He said, regular reminds me of laxative. <laughs> oh, help us, Lord. We don't ever want that regular service, right? Because we want to be able to come, and, and I, we say it a lot, but you shouldn't leave the same way you walked in. Never. When the presence of God is here, you can't stay the same. Because it's, it's charged. It's, it's life-giving. And I will talk a little scripture today. And, and like the underlying theme is don't bow down to counterfeit crowns. Because everywhere around you, there's another worldview that's competing for your what, whatever's going to be on the throne of your heart. And Jesus Christ cannot be taken off the throne of your heart. Remember that old track from uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, the four spiritual laws? Billions of those things have been handed out. But there's never been a day when more things are competing. But in the midst of all the chaos and confusion, Jesus never looked better than he does right now, too. So if we'll be his people and tell the truth, then, then what I'm going to show you in Scripture is there's actually an illumination in you. There's a light inside of you. The light of Jesus shines through you. And in any area that you've really given him lordship, that's where that light is shining out. So it could be brighter, right? I mean, we could all say that the light of God could be brighter in us because the closer I become to him, the brighter that light's going to shine. There's nothing else competing, and that window gets cleaned in my heart. And now somebody could just walk in, and, and somebody's like, what's different about you? And you're like, well, I don't, all I know is that I'm trying to be like Jesus. So if, I, if I'm more like him, then I'm going to be illuminated. Hallelujah. Free wattage. <laughs> Talk about solar power. <laughs> we got the sun empowering us. Um, so, look, it's just the reality that this is, this is holy to the Lord. When we bring these envelopes up to the altar, we, we like to do it as a prophetic act, as, as a way of saying, I'm not just talking about loving you, Lord, that this is, this is a a natural thing that I can do, something in the natural realm that reflects a spiritual truth. 
that I recognize that everything I have is a gift from you. You believe that? I didn't hear anybody say amen about that. Everybody, ha everything I have is a gift from you. All right, now you had a chance to practice it. I didn't always believe that. You know, I, I said it many times, but I love being married to my wife because you never know what you're going to get with Trisha. But it's going to be truth. <laughs> She's going to speak the truth. It doesn't always feel like love, but it is in love because it's to help us understand it. It's like, what did the Lord tell you? Not what, what are you thinking, but what did the Lord tell you? And he made it real clear that we can't, we can't hold on too tight to things because we're just stewards of the finances that he gives us, right? He owns it all. And he, and, he, and he called the person a fool who said, oh, I'm just going to build better barns. I'm just a bigger barns. I'm just going to have more and more so that I, I can be, uh, live a life of leisure. And it's like, no, I give you the ability to get wealth in order that you may establish God's covenant in the earth. So that's what he did. He gave us wealth. And then we show by our heart action and by our physical actions that we believe that. And that when we sew this envelope in that basket, it's going to multiply. It comes back on us for being obedient to what he told us to do. Amen? I don't care if you're not cheerful. Let's stand up. <laughs> I'm cheerful that he has done miracles in my life to allow me to have this offering in my hand right now. Anybody else beside me think if you didn't get saved, you'd be dead right now? Well, there's a miracle right there. Right? So, like, I know you're not saying that lightly. And, like, yeah, that means that all the money that we made after that is all kind of house money. Because we'd have been dead. There wouldn't have been anything to give, right? So, Lord, we're just so grateful that you spared our lives. And, and because you gave your whole life for us, we want to give our whole lives back to you. Thank you for what's already happened in this house today. Thank you for the rich presence that is here with us. And as we give, Lord, we just say, like I said already, multiply it. Like the loaves and the fishes were used to feed so many people. We say use these dollars as food for the, for the kingdom, as weapons for the kingdom of God against the kingdom of darkness in this region. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here we go. I'm keeping my shoes off just to remind everybody we're on holy ground. Good to come on to the clicker here. Good. So I just want to give you a little map in case you're new here and you don't know where um, the upper room building is. It's that top arrow. We're in the chapel on the side right now. How cool is it that we got all new paving on the property? Yeah. I mean, they ran out of time because there's still parts of the back that isn't done yet and, and when you first drive in. but. Actually, the road that's dug up now is better than the old road before they dug it up. <laughs> so they have to wait till it gets warm enough, so it might not be till spring. But, but the bulk of it's done. Amen. So that's, that was a blessing. Uh, I want to let you know that, again, we're getting back to normal. The healing rooms are, are back in action. And that uh, is important. Um, we've been doing it for so long. And frankly, it's been such a part of our church culture since we first started, that we expect God to move. We expect people to be healed. There, there, will, there will always be people praying at the altar at, at the end of every service, and we're not leaving if you want to get prayer, because we believe God can heal anybody. It's not because we're so great. It's because he's so great. But if we don't even believe that he can do it, then we wouldn't even have prayer ministry here. But we do believe it. You know, there's I mean, sometimes it seems silly. Remember, Anthony, I'm just looking at you, and I'm remembering when we were back at 219, and your back was really bothering you, and I don't know why I did this. I just said, well, why don't you lay down, and let's just lift your legs up in the air, and I'm going to practice chiropractic without a license here in the name of Jesus. And, right, like, the pain left. It was amazing. It's not me. It's the God that we serve. So, you know, when COVID first started, it was hard for us to feel like we had to be in this ultra heavy duty lockdown, you know, and I won't say it because I don't want anybody to think I'm criticizing any other position except that 
like again, what Mario Murillo said is, you can't sing there's an army rising up without being the army that rises up, <laughs> right? What good is singing about it? He said, I never saw an army take so long to rise up. And, and we don't want to just sing words to a song. If we're singing that the blood of Jesus protects us and no weapon formed against us will prosper, right, then we got to pray for the sick and not be worried. Well, what if it doesn't work? Well, wait a minute. We're just being obedient to what God said. And, and if it's not working, there could be many reasons, but it's not on his side of the equation. It would be on our side. And again, another day's teaching, but this is significant for us that, we start, that we're starting this up again because like, you don't have to come if you're afraid about the, the lack of uh, mask wearing. But we're just following the rules. You know, we're, we're, we're being legal. But frankly, some of these rules that they're trying to pass are not even legal. And I'm not a judge, but the judges are going to throw this stuff out. I'm confident, just like Cheyam won in the Supreme Court. But in the meantime, we are going to be praying for people on the second Saturday of every month for now. There might be a conference that, that shakes that up. And uh, my cousin, I'm sorry, my cousin, I'm sorry, my sister-in-law, Anna uh, Kastner, is the one who's been running that for 14 years now. Yeah, 14 years. So many testimonies. It's amazing. But just so I can say it out loud and everybody hears me, it's not going to be here on this property. It's at our church office, which is at 20 Church Street. Say that with me. 20 Church Street. I'm sorry. I'm not treating like infants here, but I don't want people coming here. But that has handicap accessible. All right, and if it's a Saturday, we don't always know that that lower level of that building, the commons, is going to be available. But we do always know that our building is accessible on a Saturday. So you just go in the back, park in the back, and come up and bring people in wheelchairs because there's a ramp, and we'll get them in there. Okay, but God's not bound by any restrictions. And uh, I don't know if Juanita is here. Juanita Daly, are you here? Okay. So this is a friend of hers, uh, Karen Jennings, who uh, has recorded a new album. And they're going to rent the chapel out on the 19th of November. And they agreed to make it a, partly a fundraiser for Feeding Hands here on this property. So if you would like to come, there's information on our website about that. That's coming up pretty quickly. Um, and not only is it going to be anointed music, but it's, it's a great cause because, as you all know, that Feeding Hands got flooded out, lost 25 tons of food. That was worth about $100,000, uh, and, you know, they've, they've been very disrupted in their distribution, but praise God, money's coming in for that as well. And then, okay, so next Wednesday, we have Jesse Dupl is it next Wednesday? Yeah, Tuesday, sorry, my, my mistake. Um, we, so the, I guess what I meant to say is we won't have a midweek service on Wednesday next week. We'll have Tuesday night with Jesse Duplantis. A anybody know who he is? All right. Come, come with your faith level really high. You know, I like him because he's an ex-rock and roll guy who was successful. I'm an ex-rock and roll guy that wasn't so successful, but I can relate to him, uh, you know, in, in so many different ways. And he's, he's just going to build our faith. That's, that's what it's about. And I could always use a shot of that. Uh, we, we already know about the food drive that's coming on the 20th, and we've gotten a lot of people that are willing to uh, volunteer, but the more the better. So you can go on our website. And then again, I just want to honor people. If you got here after worship was over and you're a veteran, would all the veterans please stand up? Because on the 11th of November is the day that we celebrate it. But we don't want to wait. We want to honor all of you right now. And we thank you for your service. And anybody who's watching online right now, we thank you for your service. Never has it been more clear how valuable freedom is than it is right now when we're being threatened with losing our freedom. So if it wasn't for you all willing to put your life on the line, then we would have lost this a long time ago. So church, say it with me. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. We're not losing our freedom on my watch. Amen. Come on, girl, you got it. In the name, no, I'm kidding. So... <laughs> No, so Dick's, Dick's box, where are you? Back there. So Dick made this awesome, you can't see it up against this gray thing here, but um, this wonderful work of art here, stained glass of our flag. 
So we just want to honor that because that's not easy to do, but it's quite beautiful, isn't it? And thank God for our flag of freedom. Amen? Amen. Amen. I thought that spirit of preach was going to come back on her again. <laughs> you can preach, girl. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you know, the idea that men can't learn from women, I'm sorry. Like, you know, that's long gone. If you're in our church, you know that. I haven't stopped learning from my wife. It doesn't make me less of a man. <laughs> I'll take it. And I know there's a verse in Timothy. I'm, I'm with you. That'll be another day's sermon, okay? So Revelation 5.5 5 says, The Lion of Judah has conquered. And that's the crown that we bow down to. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. He's the King of all the kings, Lord of all the lords, and he has raised us up to be priests and kings in the earth, not to just get to heaven when we die, but to rule and reign with him for eternity. So we are now, while we're in this life, we are training for our reigning later in life, in the afterlife, which will be much better than this life, and not a boring harp on a cloud either. We will be actively reigning and ruling with Jesus. And I, Lord, we just say that we refuse to bow down right now to any counterfeit crown. And, and what you were doing at the altar here to just reveal the lies that we've come into agreement with, that never stops. That revelation that you bring us to keep us in the right state of mind. Often we become like that that son, that prodigal son who was in the pigsty, but you said he came to his senses. He was awakened in his spirit, and he realized what he was doing was wrong. And we ask you to do the same thing for us on a daily, minute-by-minute -minute basis, that, that if we start to bend our knee to a counterfeit crown, you will reveal that to us so that we will stay true to our true king, which is Jesus Christ, and we're not confused about that. So I'm using a, a text verse from Acts 26, and I love the book of Acts. I hope you all do too. I mean, pretty much any Pentecostal church you go to, you know they're going to be reading a lot out of the book of Acts because that wasn't just Jesus doing miracles. That was the apostles and the disciples doing miracles, and it was the birth of the church. So if my, my, my email address is uh, proselli291 at gmail. Okay, that means Acts chapter 29, verse 1. And you're like, there isn't, a, there isn't a chapter 29 in Acts. And I'm saying, yes, there is. It's today. It's right now. We're supposed to be living in Acts chapter 29, verse 1. And that's a good reminder. So Paul is just describing in all these different court appearances that he has um, why so many people want to kill him. And he goes and tells these Roman senior leaders that, that are wondering, why are they so upset with you? doesn't even appear like you're breaking any laws. And he's like, well, I'm, I was just on my way to persecute these people, and I saw the light <laughs> on the road to Damascus. I saw this light, and, and it blinded me. It was so bright, but I heard the voice speaking to me. And this is part of his testimony. What God said to him is, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to do what? Come on, loud, a little louder, okay? To open their eyes. Do you think America needs their eyes open to the truth right now? I've never seen a level of confusion any higher than what it is. They're making blanket statements that make zero sense. Like there's no biological difference between a man and a woman. Can we just stop right there and say, I'm sorry. The science doesn't back that up. If you're a science denier, then you might say that. But I'm not. The science is accurate on that one. Men and women are different. And if they weren't, why would you take hormones to change yourself? Is this common sense? But yet, you know, and you might say, well, that's not right because there's a certain group of people that feel that they're being discriminated against. And I agree, it's never right to discriminate against anybody, including my kids that are in school by telling them that there's no biological difference. <laughs> Because there is. I don't want a five-year-old kid learning that. And I don't want my tax dollars. I mean, we pay a lot of tax up here. Can they at least tell the truth in school with the curriculum? And what does it say, right? Not on my watch. If you don't say anything, 
I think we're going to be accountable to the Lord. He's sending us to open their eyes because this is no different. That it wasn't just Paul. This is the assignment that we have. That's the ones I'm sending you, the ones that, that I have to deliver you from, the ones that want to persecute you, <laughs> to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light. Now, your words could be very powerful, but if there's a light in you, they're drawn out of darkness to your light. And well, I'll tell you what, like that was the sermon that got me saved was the light that I saw in my mother. She did talk. She witnessed to me, but... I knew there was something way down different in her than I, than I had, and I knew I needed what she had. And I couldn't describe it like I can now then, but I knew I needed it. So really, I, I already said it, like, if you leave with no other thought, how, just say, how bright is my light shining when I meet other people? And is there anything I could do to make it shine brighter? And the answer is yes. And that's not condemnation, and that's not a works mentality. It's not like, oh, never enough, no matter what I do, it'll never be enough. No, that's not, that's not our goal. So you just start thinking about those people on your job and your family members that you're going to see at Thanksgiving now and all the debates about who you voted for or who you didn't vote for. That's all surface stuff. When you carry a peace inside of you, and it says this right in Luke chapter 15, and, and it's a long chapter, and we would call it the prodigal son chapter, but right at the very beginning of that chapter, it says that the tax collectors and sinners were drawn to Jesus. What was the light inside of him? Like a moth to a flame, they were drawn to him. And right in the same scene, the Pharisees are also standing there, but nobody's being drawn to the Pharisees. Because all they do is shame people and reject them and, and, and rank them. And yet here's Jesus who didn't accept their sin, but accepted them. And what about us? Boy, it's a good place to start. I don't have to criticize everybody else. You could just say, let's look in the mirror and let's start here. And what can I do to turn them from the darkness they're in to the light that's in me? Well, if there's not enough light in me, I can do something. I can increase my voltage. We're not on a little 9-volt battery that's running out of juice. <laughs> We're plugged into the solar power. Whew. So... Paul's saying, look, I got an assignment from God on the road to Damascus, and I have to be true to my assignment. I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to open their eyes, turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. I mean, this is a whole sermon right here, isn't it? Because anybody who's bowing to a counterfeit crown is under the power of the prince of the air. Satan. That's the power of Satan. And I'm turning them from that to God. Because I'm the greatest philosopher or the greatest apologetic teacher of the Bible? No, because he lives in me. And when he lives in me, other people can see that he lives in me. Can you imagine if you needed a college degree to be a Christian? But that's how it feels in America sometimes. We've elevated the academic so high that we've eliminated the, the value of the power being demonstrated. Which would you rather have? Right. Like the example I've used is if you had to go into battle in war, do you want the professor that was at West Point teaching for 20 years or the guy who's been fighting in the war on the front lines for 20 years? Who do you want leading you into battle? Pretty obvious. Theory doesn't matter when you have to practice it. Theory matters, but not without the practice. <laughs> and we can't just talk about this. We have to do it that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So there's Paul's mission in part. God told me he was going to send me to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, and that they would receive forgiveness and, and that inheritance, that they could have the same thing who are sanctified by faith in the Lord. Wow. That's a big one. I'm going to shoot to the end because I had a whole bunch of stuff here, but I know what time it is. I want you to think about people that, that refuse to bow to counterfeit crowns. You've got to go to Daniel on that one, right? Because we know that there was a law passed that everybody had to bow down to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, and he was an ego freak, and he wanted everybody bowing down to his crown. So these Chaldeans come and they say, hey, you got certain Jews among you who have set over the, you've set over the affairs of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. <laughs> you ever hear kiss the ring? 
<laughs> they don't want to kiss your ring. And uh, that's why I keep this up here, right? Jesus is not a, a ring-kissing kind of king, is he? He's a foot-washing kind of king. He's the king of all the kings, and he bowed down and washed people's feet. Even the one who would turn him in, betray him. You ever think of that? Judas is up there. Dang. How much love is that? <sighs> I haven't paid due regard to you. Well, it's not about you. <laughs> it's not about me. It's about him. But this king boy, he had a big ego. They don't serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. And Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, I don't know if that reminds you of Psalm 2, but it should, because that's what it says. Why do the heathen rage against God, against having any set of rules? That's what we're seeing in, in the culture today is that there, any rule is a bad rule because whatever rule you say, that's your rule. That's your truth. There is no such thing as the truth. You notice that? All right. Well, by saying there is absolutely no absolute truth, you just contradicted yourself, okay? So why don't you start there when you're talking to that pe person? Because you're saying there's absolutely no absolute truth. Well, okay, enough. You've been discredited. <laughs> so he gave a command to bring these three guys, and they brought them before the king, and he said, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you don't serve gods or worship the gold image? And they went, yep, <laughs> that's true. Because then he threatened them that he would throw them in the fiery furnace. And I'm, I have a feeling they looked at each other and, and said, he don't know about the fourth man that's going to show up in the fire. But we do. And they answered and said, hey, O oh king, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to even answer you in this matter. If that's the case that you're going to throw us in the furnace, our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O oh king. <laughs> Now, we don't live in an age right now where we see a lot of people having to really sacrifice everything for their Christian uh, witness. But there is history of the church that talked about the early disciples when they were being brought into the Roman Colosseum to be eaten by lions in front of a stadium full of people who were worshiping God and singing praise songs on the way in because they believe what Hebrews call in a better resurrection. They basically said, no matter what you can offer me, it pales in comparison to what I have in the life to come as a follower of Jesus Christ. And, and the, the church has been built on the blood of the martyrs for all these years. And we've elevated, elevated, elevated in America. We're so comfortable, and that's a good thing. It's a blessing of God. But not until we, we fail to say, not on my watch. Then we're not his church. He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. That's Jesus saying that. It's not Peter's church. It's Jesus' church. And he gave his life for this. I don't think any of us have to worry about losing our lives anytime soon. Okay? But taking a stand, well, I mean, I hope you realize that's the kind of church you're standing in right now or sitting in. So it says, even if not, king, let it be known to you that we don't serve your gods or will we worship the gold image which you have set up. And that should make you think of Revelation 12, 11, which says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony. And, and often you'll hear that verse quoted and it'll just stop right there. <laughs> Don't stop right there. That's not the full verse. It's not just the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, but this part's a little uncomfortable. Love their lives, not unto death. That gives you a reckless abandon for God. That might sound negative. Well, why would you be reckless? Faith is is risky, right? There's nothing real secure about faith. And I'm not saying be foolish. I'm, you know, be in, be in connection with a lot of other believers. And, and, and you, you know, you remember that when God wanted to heal people, often he would have the prayer person put the other people out of the room because he wanted to make sure there was enough faith there because people with unbelief can lower the power operating in the room. We're not, it's not based on rank. It's based on faith. And you're not a bad person, but... Could you go outside for a minute? Because we want to pray. <laughs> and, you know, their faith will rise up when that person walks off the, the deathbed. And then they'll be ready to pray for somebody too, right? So William Wallace in Braveheart, I heard an interview with the man who wrote this script. It was brilliant. And you might remember, they're all lined up, and the English army's on the way. And, and um, Mel Gibson is riding on the horse as, 
as William Wallace, and he's got all that blue paint on his face, and, and he's just giving like the halftime coaching talk at a football game. And he says, okay, you guys that want to run, go ahead, run. You'll live, at least for a while. But think about this. When you're dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance to come back here right now at this moment that we're in and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. <laughs> That's the American way, man. Sorry. That's the American way. You look at this ground that we're on. This is revolutionary war territory right here. It was so pathetic to think that the Americans could ever beat the British that it was laughable in the natural. You study it on your own. There's plenty of places around here where you can get that info. It had to be God. So why would we think it's going to be any different now? No matter how confusing the world gets, Jesus is our plumb line. The word of God is our plumb line. And I love this last quote. Every man dies. Not every man truly lives. Which one you want to be? Retreat and then be in regret many years from now? Uh -uh. Not casting any judgment on anybody else. I'm just saying no. That's, that's, not, the, that's not the stance we're taking. I'm, I'm not ever going to talk about physical violence or any kind of violence, really. It's the truth that wins. That's what Jesus was saying all along. It's not going to be a political takeover. It's going to be a revival in people's hearts. And the Romans are going to recognize this is a greater kingdom. And they did. In 400 years, Christianity took over without firing one gunshot. Well, they didn't have guns back then, but you get my point. You get the analogy. I'm going to keep going. Government. Um, I'm going to wind it down quick now. Just think about government for a minute, okay? It's not politics. You all have a government in your heart right now. Whether it's been called that or not, you've got a set of rules that you live by. And they can change based on a situation, but when you come down to a conviction, you end up doing what you believe. And that young girl that became famous in Colorado at the Columbine shooting, you know, whether... I don't know I mean, their names and all and whether all the stories are completely accurate, but you can understand why a young girl being threatened with being shot would say, nope, I'm not going to disown Jesus. Go ahead and shoot me. Right? Like, she believed it. My mother was in a bad car accident in her mid-80s, and the car flipped over, and the, the, the EMS guys come to get her out, and they told me this later because I knew them. And she was upside down in a lot of pain because the seatbelt was, you know, she was upside down. And they're looking in the car. And they're like, are you okay, lady? And she's like, yeah, I'm fine. If my time is over, I know where I'm going. <laughs> wow. That's what you really believe when you say it there. And that's what these men said to me, like, Reverend, uh, we've seen a lot of people in these extractions, and they're usually freaking out. You could understand that, right? And your mom was not freaking out. And that freaked us out. <laughs> so it says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. So you can trust Jesus for your government. You may not know all the rules yet, but keep reading. Keep reading the Bible. Keep getting it in your heart, and you'll understand what that means to have him govern your heart. You know this, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. This is not just a Christmas verse, right? Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Why don't we focus on that one? Yes, Lord, increase my peace. Well, that comes when I fully put my trust in him for my government. I'm going to go ahead a little faster. These are all so good. We'll get to that another time. So he called his 12 disciples together. Any disciples of Jesus here? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. Come on. Don't miss your chance. Okay. We're all his disciples. He called them together and gave them power and authority over some demons. Thank you. And to cure some diseases. Thank you. If he's the God of the universe, I think he knows about this. And then go back to Revelation. There were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Say it with me. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord 
and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's a rulership that you want to tie into right there. The kingdoms of the world are all going to fade. You serve the true king. Man, oh man, and there's no need to qualify to get into his kingdom. You don't have to hand in your resume. He doesn't need to see your LinkedIn profile. You're accepted. And Adriel said that when he gave that altar call earlier today. So many of us think, oh man, he would never want me. He doesn't. You guys don't know the mess I made. Yeah, well, he said to the thief on the cross, you'll be with me today in paradise. Whatever that guy did was worthy of death. Guy never went to church, never read his Bible. Kind of hard to read your Bible when your hands are nailed to a cross. Didn't get baptized. Still was in paradise with Jesus. Sounds good to me. This is the last slide. Somebody say amen. <laughs> Come on, let's stand. Thank you all for being willing to be flexible in the church. Like, I mean... We don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but we've just learned that we got to let the Holy Spirit have his way. You know, I don't know that he's, uh, I mean, the Bible does say let all things be done decently and in order, right? But you might focus too much on the decent and in order and forget you're supposed to let all things be done, <laughs> okay? So that's up to us, you know, and if you think, well, you know, that's in the flesh, you shouldn't do that, that's not your job. You go open your church, then it will be your job. <laughs> but for now, you don't like what somebody's doing up here? Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. We won't. We won't close our eyes. Don't worry. you got more watchers in this place than any other church you've ever been in. I'm telling you what, it's like Geiger detectors. They all start looking at each other. You see that? I'm sure glad I, they're all, all the guilty parties are up here in the front. Very discerning people. Hallelujah. Now I'll tell you, if you ever become a pastor, you want a lot of intercessors. Let me just put that up the table right now. Whew. So we're in Revelation again. We're just going to finish here. Again, remember, it says the kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdoms of our God. So you do not have to bow to the counterfeit crown. Right now, the kingdoms of this world bow to the kingdom of Jesus. If that's your government in your heart. And look, his government can keep increasing. It's on the shoulder of God. Of the increase of your government and peace, there will be no end. So it can keep increasing. Man, that's good. And then they're singing this song to Jesus. For you were slain, and you have redeemed us to God by your blood. Every tribe, every tongue, every people, and every nation have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. Whew. That's not sitting on a cloud with a harp, okay? There's some destiny that we have on the other side of this life that it's way better that these disciples were willing to lose their lives to not deny Jesus. Remember, I have a feeling if you saw the resurrected Christ, you would never forget what that looked like. And like, you guys are offering me to be spared of, of being eaten by a lion, but you have no idea what I'm getting when I come back. So that's an easy trade. You've redeemed every person in here and every person watching. It doesn't matter who you are, what color your skin is, where you grew up, how many degrees you have or no degrees. He doesn't care. This is what he looks at. Man looks at the outside. God looks at the heart. Come on, let's do this. See my heart, God. See my heart. <laughs> For if we died with him, oh boy, you should be more excited about that part. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. Yeah. That's Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the Christ that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God. That's inside you. That's your right, righteousness. And if we endure, we shall also reign with him. Mm. This was a really good message. You just didn't get to hear it. <laughs> I'll give you another time. But can you say it with me? If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, 
we shall also reign with him. Give the Lord a hand. Mm. Yeah. Yes, we will. She's back. She miraculously appeared from the front row. Daniel. I just almost poked my eye out. All right. So you know that they said, we're not bowing to you. Period. End of conversation. And it says here, but even in verse 18 or 19, like 18, but even if he doesn't, let it be known to you, O king, that we're not going to serve you or your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Not happening. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and his facial expression changed. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he said, he gave a command. He said, make the furnace seven times hotter. That's what happens when we take a stand. But listen. Then he threw these men, three men were tied up in trousers, their coats, their turbans, and their clothes, and they were thrown in the midst of the furnace of blazing fire because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was extremely hot. And uh, the flames of the fire killed the men who threw him in. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace and the blazing fire still tied up. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, whoa, look. He said, I'm astounded. He jumped up and said to his counselors, didn't we throw three men who were tied up in the midst of the fire? He said, he said certainly, O king. He says, look, I see four men untied walking around in the midst of the fire, and they're not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth one is like the son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar approached the floor of the door of the blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of here. And he said, listen, he said to all his people, there was not a hair on their head singed, no effect on their bodies. Their clothes weren't even scorched, not even a smell of smoke was on them. And then listen, Nebuchadnezzar then said, he said, uh, he rescued his servants and he said, who believed in and trusted and relied on their God. They violated the king's command and surrendered their bodies rather than serve or worship any other God except their own. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that speaks anything offensive against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be cut into pieces and their houses will be made a heap of rubbish. For there is no other God who is able to save in this way. And then the king caused Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego to prosper. Now listen, that's the word of the Lord. God is saying we may, you know, cause fury. There may be people who get so angry with us, but you know what? We're serving our God. We're not bowing down to anything. But listen, the people need to see a people who take a stand for righteousness sake, who take a stand for truth, who say, I am not bowing. I am not yielding to what anything that's contrary to the word of the Lord is saying. And so this is what's going to happen because then the people are going to cry out to our God to God who is able to save and deliver and turn their lives around. This is that. This is what we're living in right now. And the Lord is saying to us, I'm there. I'm right there. I'm that fourth man in the fire of whatever you're going through right now. You are not alone. You may not think he's there, but he's there. What do you think when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into that fire? Do you think they saw Jesus at that point? Uh -uh. There was faith. But when they were thrown in, could you imagine? So like, you know what? I am bound to you. I've been serving the Lord too long. He has never let me down. So I just want to encourage you with that supernatural strength that, and, and faith. God is raising and elevating our faith unlike anything we've ever experienced before. Woo! So Lord, I just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we love you all. Prayer ministry team, come on up front, and please stop at the commons on your way out and get to know each other. We, we got coffee and bagels. We'll bribe you with any kind of food that you need. You tell us what you need, and, and, and we'll get it for you, because we want you all to just build community, get to know each other. We need each other. Can you say that? I need you. Have an awesome day. We love you.